Hi, I'm the founder, the manager, and choreographer of the oldest dance group in the world. Yeah! <laughs> It's a hip-hop dance group, and uh, there are 22 members. They're aged 68 as the youngest, and the eldest is 96, and the average age is 80. In 15 years' time, senior citizens are going to outnumber children. So how is the world going to prepare for this grey tsunami? Well, they're going to build large developments on the outskirts of town where you can spend the last third of your life away from young people and the rest of society. The idea is that you slow down and retire from living. My experience as manager of the hip hop crew has taught me that instead of slowing down the pace of our lives as we get older, we should increase the pace, in fact, turn it up full throttle. Not only are we going to live longer if we do that, but our funerals will be a lot more interesting. <laughs> the effects of ageism are far-reaching. In the United States, nearly three times more senior citizens commit suicide than young people. Three more times. But with every problem is an opportunity. This grey tsunami could be the best ride ever. Instead of seeing aging as a, a deterioration in the quality of the life we once knew, it could be a vast improvement. In fact, it's the best time of our lives. And why shouldn't it be the best time of our lives? When you get to 65, you've got no work pressures, your children are independent, you answer to no one. Your sole aim can be in the pursuit of happiness and fulfillment. Now, obviously, when you've you know, getting older, you're going to have an increase in medical issues. So it's not without its challenges. Out of the 22 members of my dance group, four use mobility aids, uh, five have had open heart surgery, all of them have arthritis, uh, six are deaf, one's blind, there are 15 hip and knee replacements amongst them. Yeah, and I think about five have dementia from memory. Um, anyway, uh, but it's manageable. The thing is, is, is people ask me about the, the members of my group with dementia. They ask me in like these whispered tones, tell me about the members of your dance crew with dementia. Why are we still talking about dementia in whispers? There is no shame in having dementia. If we live that long, most of us are going to have it in one form or another. Now, without doubt, it makes things difficult. But having dementia is not a deal breaker for living a fulfilling and happy and rewarding life, as long as you've got good people around you and courage. Now, when I uh, you know, teach the members of my dance group with dementia, I, I focus on their muscle memory by repeating a movement again and again like this, the muscle forms a memory much stronger than the brain does. So that's the technique I use. Now you might think, oh, well, this Billy Jordan, she's some sort of expert dance teacher. Well, I'm not. I'm probably the worst dance teacher on the planet. Before I set up this group, I had no idea how to dance, no idea about hip hop. I had no experience with older people. So you may wonder, well, why do I care about how senior citizens are treated? Well, I was once like many senior citizens. I was isolated and depressed, not because of age, but because I grew up in a very abusive environment. I felt worthless and nobody cared about me. I couldn't plan for a future as I didn't think I had one. I developed post-traumatic stress disorder and by the time I was eight years old, I tried to commit suicide. When I became an adult, I was always scared of being killed and had flashbacks of past trauma all the time. But I realized the only way I was going to survive the dysfunction of both my immediate and my extended family 
was if I cut myself off from them so that I had one chance of becoming a sane, balanced individual. So I decided I'm going to move away from all of them, start a new trauma-free life. I moved to Christchurch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eight weeks after I arrived, I found myself in the middle of New Zealand's worst natural disaster. I was in the CBD, and I was injured, and nearly 200 of people around me were crushed to death by falling buildings. I was re-traumatized, and the constant fear of death returned stronger than ever. After I became homeless, I moved to Waiheke Island off the east coast of Auckland. Once again, I was isolated and depressed. I had no job and I didn't know a soul. But I noticed that the senior citizens in my neighborhood were in a similar position to me. They feared death and couldn't see a future. So I decided to do something about it, to add more meaning to my life and to give them something new and stimulating to do, which would increase their sense of self-worth. So I got in my black van, and I drove around the island, and I went up to anybody who looked 65 years and over, and I said, hey, get in the back. I want to <laughs> I want to set you up as the world's oldest flash mob. And I didn't want to exclude people based on their you know, mental or physical capability. So I had two criteria. You had to be 65 years or older, and you had to have a pulse. <laughs> and uh, anyway, after about four months of flash mob performances around the show, I realized that everyone else in their lives had little or no expectations of them. That's really demoralizing, no matter what age you are. So I decided I'm going to be the first person in their life since retirement that's going to have really high expectations of them, set an almost impossible goal for them to aim for. I told them, right, you're now a hip-hop dance group, and the goal is, is in that eight months' time, you're going to go on the other side of the world to Las Vegas and perform at the World Hip-Hop Championships. <laughs> they were like, um... When the word got out about our audacious goal, people in the street would scowl at me. Some woman coming onto the island, setting up the old people for failure. When they're going to die, it's cruel. <laughs> the thing is, is they looked happier and more alive, and they no longer talked about the past. It was all about the future, what they were doing next. It was, everything was future. I did sort of worry, well, is it wrong to put an incentive to live in, in front of somebody at this stage in their life? Or should I just leave them all alone and hope the grips of depression takes hold of them so that when death comes, it's actually a welcome relief? They knew they were getting old and life's end was in sight, but they desperately wanted to be somewhere where there were expectations of them. I had people say to me, well, what if they die? Well, what if they did? People have this very set idea about how you're supposed to die. Lying in bed, propped up on a pillow, crocheted blanket around you, eyes closed, somebody holding your hand. The thought that somebody might die on the dance floor or on a plane was shocking to people. Instead of dying like this, they might die like this. Uh. I don't, I mean, what a shock. I don't know about you, but I want to die like that. Have your coffin made out in that shape? That'll give them something to talk about at the funeral, wouldn't it? Anyway, so what we did is we made a pact. If anyone died during a dance, we'd just step over them and carry on dancing. They all gave themselves hip-hop names. Uh, so behind me, starting from your left, you can see Terry Two Cents. She's 95. The second one, the one that's going 
something like that. That's Cara Bang Bang. You've got to watch out for her. She's 95. Then there's Quicksilver. She's 96. She's our oldest member. Then you've got Sergeant Sal. He's 93. And then you've got his wife, uh, Dollar 92. And <laughs> she's 92. I treated them as equals. <laughs> I had high expectations of them, and age was no excuse. People were quite taken aback at how I treated my crew. I remember this article in the New Zealand Herald said, described it like a tough love, and said, I don't know what's more shocking, the way Billy Jordan treats these old people or their complete transformation, but they're reveling in it. I started being called the Granny Whisperer. <laughs> and, uh, and then, when this article in the Herald got published, I had senior citizens phoning me all over the country wanting to join the group. They desperately wanted to be somewhere where there were expectations of them. The thing is, it's not the hip-hop dancing they really want. It's just the opportunity to be treated like a capable human being again. So, did my group make it to the Olympics of hip-hop? Yep. And... And I know your next question is, but did anyone die? No, they didn't. Did anyone get lost? Yes. 81-year-old, shake it up, Sheila, she caught the wrong bus and ended up somewhere in the state of Nevada. <laughs> but look, the thing is, she turned up again eight hours later and she had a great story to tell. Now, that was two years ago. Has anyone died since then? No. In fact, their doctors say they're healthier now than they've been in years. <laughs> Instead of stifling older people's capabilities, we should be doing every single thing we can do to maximize their potential. When you take a group of senior citizens, you have high expectations of them, you treat them as an equal, despite the fact they're blind, deaf, disabled, have dementia, you can not only enrich their lives, but also the lives of everyone else around them making this world a better place for everyone.